Right, okay, we're going to talk about uh, the Screamer Council because they are the hot topic at the moment. And what we're just going to look through today is uh, the Herald and how really to use the Herald in conjunction with the Screamers and the Screamer Council. So, the Screamer Council contains four Heralds in my list. And if you want to look at what the whole of my list contains after this or during this or whenever, then follow the link. Now, follow this link. And that will take you to um, a different video which talks about um, my list in full. But today we're just going to concentrate on the Screamer Council. So what we'll be looking at is uh, there are four Heralds. Each of them are level three. Um, the first her Herald is is on a, a bike or a jet bike. Um, the second Herald is on a jet bike and then also has Conjuration, um, which gives the unit uh, plus one to strength when firing. So normally you're, you're trying to look for flickering fire. The third Herald um, is exactly the same kind of outfit in terms of a level three with a jet bike, but then also uh, has an exalted gift. Normally what you're looking for with that exalted gift is um, the, the portal or porta potty um, or the grimoire, depending on what magic that you roll for that guy. And then on your fourth guy, it's exactly the same. So jet bike level three, plus then you're looking at an exalted gift for the grimoire or port porta potty. And the reason that you, it depends on the powers is because if you roll recognition in terms of your powers for either of those guys, that's the guy you're going to get the grimoire to, or will be explained later on. Okay, right, so the first thing that we're going to look at is uh, multi-assault. And it's really, really important with the Screamo Council because the one thing that you know that you've got is you've got a very large unit. This is not only Screamers, it's like big, big beast packs, Jet Seer Councils, anything really where it's got a large model count and is pretty tough in combat can use these kind of rules. One of the weaknesses to the Screamer Council is that it, unfortunately, um, can only kill normally one unit at a time. So what, what makes it or what is the most powerful thing about it is close combat. There's a bit of a debate about it, but yeah, it's it's close combat that is the, the most powerful. And the reason is, is that rather than shooting one unit and just killing one unit in a turn, if you can get in the right position, you can kill a multiple amount of units, and therefore you can sort of up your tally in terms of kills and be somewhere else in the board far sooner than you'd want it to be. So what we've got here is we've got the Screamer Council, which is here with four Heralds and Screamers packed around it, and then, we're, uh, and then we're going up against Tau. We had to pick Tau because it is the dreaded Tau, and why not kill them? So we've got crew. We've got, what's this, Frankie? <laughs> Devil fish. A devilfish. Yes. And we've got some crisis suits. Yeah. I don't remember the things that don't kill me. Now. So why do you remember any of them? Uh? Why do you remember any of them? Does any of that kill you? That does. <laughs> so what we're now going to look at is we're going to look at multi assaulting. Now, Back in the old days of 5th, multi-assaulting was very, very popular. A lot of old players were always using this for the same reason, to get further up the field and kill more units in one turn. But since 6th has hit, really multi-assaulting has been hurt. And the reason it's been hurt is one that you lose one attack if you try and go in and they're, uh, to two separate units. And secondly, there is a random charge distance. But once you have a large unit that can, that can take on multiple amounts of units, then all of a sudden what you're looking at is you're looking at a unit that's able to take hits from hits from other units and at the same time uh, is is able to go through those units. So, Screamer Council, what you're then what you're then looking at is you, you've got a 12 inch move. So the target unit is going to be the crisis suits and we're gonna move, we're gonna sweep across, we're gonna sweep across the board, but we're gonna sweep one way and then we're also going to charge into the rest. And it's important that we it's important that we set that up first up. So your first unit, your first movement needs to be with your screamer and your screamer comes through and it goes one inch, or if you like to cheat, half an inch away from the crisis suit. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna make a wave, which is a lap, a wave of your army, which is gonna go around the three. And because you've got the 12 inches, you've got a lot to move with. So your second one has to keep within two inches, or if you like to cheat, one and a half inches. The second one will come, come through now. The reason that we do it this way is you have to go your full 12 um, when you're going to go into assault. But at the moment, what we're trying to do is is trying to manipulate this charge so that we're able to get into all three, no matter what the dice roll is, when we, we come to charge. So the, the next guy is going to come through, next guy, and so on. Now, when we come to here, we're now looking at heralds. And what heralds are going to do is that they can actually do a lot of damage to Kroot. So the heralds are going to spin off and then and come this way. 
The Heralds are very important in a multi-assault because of the size of their base. They're able, to, in many ways, they're able to block where your movement is going to go. Now this is going to look weird, but the next guy probably would go here. And then what I'm looking at is I'm looking at going this far. Now this is a huge S shape. Now the S shape is what the S shape is what all multi assaulters in um, fifth would use, and they would use it all the time to ensure that they were able to get to get the assaults off on multiple units. And it's exactly the same we're using here. So it's the S shape. So as I said before, we're going to assault. We're going to assault the crisis suits first, secondary, third. So we'll roll a dice. Can this be seen? Yeah. Right, so we've rolled a five, and a five is almost perfect. So we have to go into base to base if we can make it, and then the second guy can make it. Third guy can't make it. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to go as far as you can towards the towards the unit, which now means as long as I keep within coherency, I now bump into into all of these units. And as we know, the Screamer Council We'll just go straight through everybody. There's a couple of important fa factors here because what we're using is we're using the multi-assault rules. So you have to make sure that first off, the closest model touches the closest model, which was this guy onto our crisis suit. The second thing that you have to make sure is that, uh, that you have to go into base to base when an engage model, if you can make it. The second guy could make it, the third guy couldn't. Then you have to keep two inch coherency for any movement that then takes place if you go into multi-assault which is why the S shape is so important. Let's pretend that we'd roll a different number, something that's a bit difficult, 10. So 10 makes it a little bit a little bit more tricky for us now. Now the reason that 10 makes it makes it trickier for us is when, when we've got our units, which are roughly based about kind of here. It's good placement there. The, the issue that we've got now is this, that far more guys can get into contact. So if you think about it, I've got 10 inches here, I'm now looking at one, two, three, four, five, six guys that can make it. So what you're looking to do is obviously closest to closest has to go again. Then you have to go 10 inches. So 10 inches it is, we'll go. The third guy cannot make it into combat with, with the third crisis suit. But what he can make it in is with this guy. But what I want to do is I want to block, I want to start to block some of this off. So I'd go here where I'd want to go. The second guy, he can make it. So he goes here, but this is where it's really important and the heralds come into play in that the Herald cannot now get into base to base because I've made sure that I've blocked him being able to do that. So this is the point now where I'll now go within two inches. And now this is where I can now still make my lap. So even though it was 10 inches, we now play the exact same as we did before. We've got two in and now the Heralds go back on the crew because that they're, they're the guys that they're going to be able to make. And so no matter what, we've got our S shape, which still which still maneuvers because you've got a big unit. Okay, the next thing that we're going to look at is the defense against the, the blast template. What we've got here is we've got our screamer pack, and this is in what I would kind of kind of say sort of the circle the wagons kind of deployment that any kind of screamer player that you'll see on the tournament scene is doing. The reason they're doing this is because they've got their heralds protected in the middle, and then they've got the nine screamers around the outside, and then they've made sure that the closest to their heralds is the screamers for any kind of sniper kind of stuff that, that's going to take place. However, where this gets kind of difficult is if people start to blast down. So say you had a Thunderfire Cannon that was going to go and hit this deployment. That's hitting four models. That's bad. That's bad news, Brown, especially if they're then going to try and snipe your Grimoire, this bad boy. If they then have a blast template, that's now on five models. If it's here, we're on six models. So that's six guys getting sniped. Now, most of the time, you, you, you're not worried about it because you've got a two-up, two-up re-rollable if your Grimoire's gone off because you've used forewarning, combine it with the Grimoire to get your two-up, Zeech, re-roll one, so it's a two-up re-rollable save. However, what what has not got a two-up re-rollable save is your Grimoire. Uh, the guy that actually takes the Grimoire he does not benefit from it. So that's this guy. He has only got four-up re-rolling once. So so anything which is, which is barrage, which goes over the top, can snipe it. If we were to have this here, what we'd be looking at is five five models in total. And if you think that he needs to jink away um, or to, to, to knock away those those possible wounds onto onto the others, so you're looking at sort of five wounds. Say you had a manticore, a manticore hit twice, it's ten that is ten wounds. There's one or two that he's gonna have to take. Now if it's two, he's only got a four up save, fifty percent chance with two wounds, he's dead. 
If he dies, your screen council falls over. So what you need to make sure is that you protect the screamer council. The first mistake that I see um, all of the time is this mistake as a deployment. So there's blast templates in your opponent's army and people do this. So they do a similar kind of thing, but they really, really, really spread themselves out. Again, obvious why you would uh, why you would do that. You do it because you know that the blast templates come in. So now if I look at it here, we've got two models. Here, two models. Here, two. So everything's two and you're okay. The issue with this as a, a, as a potential tactic is that now you've got a really large footprint on the board and it means you're going to be much closer to enemy units. The eagle-eyed eagle uh, viewers may have noticed there are 10 crew plus an ethereal here. Now, if your balls are against the wall and you really, really need to throw it in, what a tactic a, a Tau player or any player really can do is to assault the uh, Screamer Council. And what you're looking for is because the, the ethereal is stubborn, you'll be able to hold them up. And the reason you'll be able to hold them up is because you will manipulate the charge. So we're about sort of six, six inches there. You probably make your guys here-ish. And then you, you'd whack them back in terms of your crew, making sure you don't go into terrain. So here. So you're now about sort of three inches away. So you, you know that you can get in. And then you'll roll, roll to get in to five. Well, five is almost perfect. So in, cannot make it here cannot make it so these guys now are just going to go here now if we look at sort of our three inch consolidation we've got what not many five guys that are going to be able to get going to be able to assault now make a mess of these crew but they will not go through them in one turn which means now in the in the following turn which is the screamer players turn the the screamers have not been allowed to just move off and do what they want a better defense against blast templates is to still keep yourself kind of in, kind of close and kind of in the small semicircle that we saw before, making sure that each of your screamers is next to uh, uh, next to a herald so that, that they can jink off the wounds. However, what you're looking at is if your guy's got the grimoire and there's nothing behind him to make him safe, you can bring him out of the circle. Now you may think that's a bit risky because now he can actually get shot, but there's a lot more. You're making sure that there's nothing that can come and fire through. If there was something at the angles this way, you can just bring your screamer down ever so slightly so it's the screamer that's going to be the first one to take it. The reason that you do this is because you know that with any barrage weaponry, your opponent is aiming for the grimoire guy. So, if we go on here, we're looking at two guys. So now, rather than jinking away ten, which is the possible before, because you cannot get away from it, you're only jinking away two, maybe four, four jink aways. You've got Fate Weaver's reroll, and even then you've got a four up save you've got a much greater chance of making sure they're alive a good way to use this is use this to use the side of the board so if you can have the grimoire guard on the side of the board you then know that that there's nothing behind you that can kind of snipe the grimoire from another angle 